Hi, I'm Kat, and today I'm showing you how to make this miniature dollhouse dining room set in a contemporary style. I hope you enjoy, and I also ask that you're forgiving because this is the first time I've made furniture in many, many years, and uh, first time I've ever done upholstery at all. Thanks so much for watching. I am using this coaster form that I got from Hobby Lobby. This is about four inches um, in diameter. So the perfect size for a 48 inch dining set. And I'm using some resin. So you just mix it up. Allow it to sit for just a few minutes so that the um, air bubbles can rise to the top. And because I do several red resin projects in my home, I um, am using only about half this cup of resin. I'm not using a mold release on this, so I'm pulling it out before the resin is completely set and pressing it flat on a surface. I do suggest if you're new to resin though that you do use a mold release and you can have that continue to set while you work on it the rest of the table. So this is the template that I made a sketch, a scale sketch of uh, only two pieces that you really need for this project. The first being the uh, legs of the table and I'm going to need one set of longer ones and one set of shorter ones so that's that line there. Um, I cut two of the longer ones and two of the shorter ones and then one of the round shapes. Trace those templates out on a piece of balsa wood and the wood I'm using is I think um, a little, well it says it right here, 2.3 millimeters um, thick. So there's trace those shapes on it and you can cut those out using an X-Acto knife, saw, or in my case, I have a very dull set of scissors that I don't use for much of anything else. So I'm going to go on ahead and use this for this. But if you have a pair of scissors that you'd like to keep, please don't cut wood with it um, because they'll be as worthless as these very soon. And then sand off any rough edges. And because I like an espresso finish on my furniture, I am going to paint this with a dark, um, with a black undertone, just by sparsely painting a little bit of black in several areas. And while that black paint is still wet, I'm going over it with brown paint, just to kind of smudge it in. I'm leaving some areas of the wood still exposed. And that is because I made a a slight little stain out of water and the same dark brown paint. And you can see it's relatively thin and watery and I'm just going to brush that right on top of the brown and the black. It helps to blend them together and it also helps to stain the wood as opposed to painting the wood. Add a little varnish. and then glue the two longer pieces together. I'm going to attach the ring of the table in between, making sure it's exactly halfway, and then add the other two legs. Using a thinner piece of balsa, uh, one and a half millimeters, I'm going to go on ahead and make the seat and the backs of the chairs. Score it and break it. You're going to cut that piece of wood in half and then for the curved parts of the back, you're going to soak those in some water. 
you can just soak them for a couple of hours. You just need them to get, it's fairly thin wood and you need it to get just waterlogged enough to, to bend and pull these wood. You're gonna have to weight it down though. And then I'm gonna lamp these to a paint jar. You can use ribbon, string, dental floss, raffia, whatever you have on hand. Now you have a nice curve in those. I dipped them in water one last time to, to um, relax the curve a little bit. And then I moved on to making the legs of the chair while those were drying. And this is a quarter inch piece of wood. Cut into equal sections. And then in groups of four, I'm going to go ahead and sand those flat on one side and then flip them and get the other one as well. Then with groups of two, I'm sliding those at an angle on the, on the file again. I'm filing those at an angle on one side and then filing those at an angle on the other side. Basically, I'm trying to reduce the bottoms to a square that's about half the size of the larger square. And then I stain the legs the same as I did with the table and glue those in place on the bases of the chair. Then using the fabric I'm going to use for the upholstery, I am going to cover the base of this chair. I cut little strips that were the exact length of the sides of the chair, and then I'm cutting out little notches for the legs to give it a more custom fitted appearance. And then glue the excess to the bottom and glue the excess to the top. And I actually did make four chairs only, although I only showed you two in the picture. And then for the foam, for the upholstery, I'm using two pieces. One is a very thin, very flexible piece of foam. And the other is a thicker set of foam um, that's almost like a little plastic. And for the fabric, I'm using this um, white, soft, uh, microfiber kind of um, fabric. It is actually from a placemat. And then for the curve for the back of the chair, I'm going to use the rigid piece of foam and glue that on to the curved piece of wood. And this is just to help to keep that curve intact. And then I'm adding the thinner foam on top of it to just even out the transition from the thicker foam to the wood. And then I'm sketching a, a piece on the fabric that's going to wrap around the chair. cut it out and glue it, making sure to cut out the corners.
on a thicker piece of foam right there at the back and the gap between the fabric and the wood and that's just to help to cover the gap between the fabric and the wood so it doesn't look like a big space there and then a piece of fabric to cover it a notch that fabric at the bottom and then I'm going to glue the whole packet for the seat back closed that to the base of the chair and then you can make a seat cushion. Now I'm going to use a piece of thicker foam that I've covered in a piece of paper at the back and I'm using paper here because you'll notice that throughout the video whenever I've used the glue um, either the E6000 or the hot glue, I glue directly to the fabric and not directly to the foam, or directly to the wood and not directly to the foam. And that's simply because the um, E6000 and the hot glue will eat through the foam a lot of times. So um, it's just good to give it something else to cling on to. And then I'm cutting the corners off of this fabric as well. The corners add a little extra bulk that I don't want. Um, there. It's unavoidable in some cases, but if I can do anything to remove that, then I do so. And then fold that over. And because the cushion is not going to be seen at the bottom and will be glued into place, I'm going to leave that bottom piece of paper exposed and just push that onto the chair. Make sure it fits, and then you can glue it in place. Push it back slightly to make sure you get that curve. And as you can see, it tucks under um, the little area that we had that we closed the packet off with. Finally, I'm varnishing the bottom of the legs, and I added the second and third coat to the table and legs again as well. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.